Barry Morphew's first cousin wrote an article in the Daily Beast on February 20th and I'm going to read you the article and we're going to have a little chit chat about it. I want to thank you to everybody who's been giving me well wishes. I am sick. I got the vid and it's not good. So um, I'm going to do my best to get through this. Let's get into it. The title reads, Barry Morphew is my cousin and allegedly killed his wife and cast her vote for Trump. It says, before Barry Morphew was charged with horrible crimes, I had a surreal encounter with him and the woman he is accused of murdering. On Mother's Day 2020, 49-year-old Suzanne Morphew went missing in Salida, Colorado. The mother of two adult daughters, Suzanne is the wife of my first cousin and childhood hero, Barry Morphew. Though Suzanne's body has not been found, Barry has been charged with their murder. He is out of jail on bond and he goes to trial later this year. Barry is a few years older than me, roughly the same difference in age between his father, Roger, and my own father, Joe. As Joe grew up idolizing Roger, I was raised to revere Barry. It was easy to do. Barry was handsome and charismatic, a gifted and accomplished athlete. I kept a newspaper article announcing high schooler Barry's being drafted by the Toronto Blue Jays on my bedroom wall until I left home for college. Barry lived as a child near Alexandria, Indiana, not far from where my dad grew up with his 12 brothers and sisters. I myself grew up in Hot Springs, Arkansas, where I lived with my mother, her husband, and their two children. Barry and I were both raised in religious households, a situation that led to much strife in my home and has led to my being largely estranged from both sides of my family. The long injury of my evangelical childhood has proved too traumatic for me to overcome in my family's presence largely because they remain evangelical. It has taken many years to see that I want an apology for being conceived by them, for being programmed by them, for being of them. Since that is an unreasonable expectation, I'm learning to let go. Before I realized my need to be free of that world, I met Suzanne Morphew in 2012 at a family reunion in Indiana. None of the extended Morphews had been able to attend my California wedding in 2009, and since my wife Lauren was pregnant with our first child, I thought it was a good time to introduce her to the clan. We had a pleasant, slightly tense day. The older my father got, the more he loathed being with his siblings. And then Barry invited Lauren and me to follow him in his Porsche Cayenne to his impressively large compound nearby. My abiding admiration for Barry prevented me from anticipating what followed. After showing us around his spread, Barry, Suzanne, Lauren and I sat in Barry's living room chatting. Suzanne was kind and warm. Then, as Lauren and I started to say our goodbyes, Barry turned to his wife and said, Would you share your testimony? Suzanne's expression was that of a child ordered by her father to perform a daunting task. She pulled up her ottoman and dutifully recounted the story of her struggle with Hodgkin's lymphoma, of her doctor telling her that she could not have another child, and of the remission and miracle baby that followed all of it flowing from Suzanne's unwavering faith in Christ. Though Lauren and I were greatly moved by Suzanne's story, its command performance quality put us on guard. Because of my evangelical training, I knew what was coming next. Barry thanked Suzanne for telling her story, then looked at me and said, Jason, do you believe in God? Sometimes I said truthfully. Inside, I was outraged, confused. Barry knew I had been raised to perform this tawdry salesman-esque presentation. Every Wednesday evening of my mid-teen years, I went door to door in the neighborhood around Second Baptist Church of Hot Springs, asking if the poor inhabitants had accepted Jesus as their Lord, their Savior. The evangelical call is to spread the good news so that everyone has the chance to make the choice to save their soul. I was the last person who needed to be informed of the evangelical stakes via the evangelical process. Then I remembered the arrogance of witnessing the lie an evangelical has to tell himself in order to believe that the person he seeks to save has not heard the Jesus pitch a thousand times. I recalled the centuries-old fantasy some evangelicals indulge, where they are noble missionaries educating ignorant savages about the only thing that matters. I suspect that in Barry's eyes, I had become ignorant because of a liberal bi-coastal education. What I never realized when I was witnessing was that by imposing myself on strangers, lecturing them about what they already knew, I enacted a kind of violence on them. I interrupted precious leisure and family time to impose a memorized message that took no account of my audience's individual experience. I was a robocall made flesh. It is a miracle I was not shot. Growing up, I never heard an authority figure explain how to bring back to Jesus someone like the person I have become. I still have not met anyone who has swung 
as completely from one end of the spectrum to the other, who once marched on the Arkansas Capitol to demonstrate against abortion rights, and who now takes his Jewish children to masked protests against police brutality in downtown Los Angeles. When it was clear I was not interested in being saved again, Barry leaned back in his chair, narrowed his eyes, and said, Jason's a good guy. He said it like the question had been up for debate, like he was an authority on the matter, like he was God. When my father died in 2018, I had a disagreement with relatives about details of an obituary, which led to my publishing a correction in the local paper. This experience inspired me to set up a Morphew Google alert to keep track of information published about my people. That is how I first learned about Barry and Suzanne's move from Indiana to Colorado and, after that, about Suzanne's disappearance. I sent a letter to Barry expressing my sympathy, offering my help. He texted his thanks and in December 2020, he texted me a photo of himself and his daughters smiling next to a Christmas tree. Then, in May 2021, Barry was arrested for allegedly murdering Suzanne. Soon after, I learned that Barry had also been charged with casting his missing wife's mail-in ballot in the 2020 presidential election for Trump. According to an arrest affidavit, he was admitted to voting illegally, even as he steadfastly denied murdering his wife. The roughly 130-page affidavit details his evolving alibis, his business maneuvers, and his narcissistic manipulation. But what I find most fascinating is what I have come to regard as Barry's theology. Not only did Barry suggest to the FBI that if anything bad happened to Suzanne, it may have been God's punishment for her recent behavior. After surviving cancer a second time, Suzanne had begun drinking wine and taking CBD, and she was having an affair with a former high school classmate from Indiana. He also told a Colorado TV news reporter that Suzanne trusted the Lord, and if one person got saved from this, she would think it was worth it. That quote blew my mind, less because of its blithe cruelty than for its brave theological accuracy. Barry articulated a truth about evangelical Christianity that he was uniquely situated to discover. Absolutely anything that brings a soul to Jesus is justified, including exoricide, which is killing your wife. God sending his son Jesus to earth to pay for every sin, including Suzanne's murder, which would have been on Jesus' mind while dangling from the cross, renders murder meaningless compared to its potential to confer upon a non-believer eternal happiness. If that reading of Barry's quote seems heartless, I encourage you to correct it from an evangelical theological perspective. Saving souls is all. As one of Barry's last texts to Suzanne attests, eternity in heaven mocks the comparative nanosecond of earthly existence. If Barry killed Suzanne, a human woman on earth who seems to have sought happiness here and now, I suspect he would have done it because he thought she was losing sight of heaven, losing sight of God, losing sight of death. If he dismembered and buried, burned or drowned her body, I believe he would have done it because the husband is the head of the wife, even as Christ is the head of the church. If he did it, he seems to have subsequently tried to justify or at least explain it with his faith. Who better to be known as prophet for the Make America Great Again mob? It is my hope that Barry's adamantine faith, combined with his current existential crisis, will inspire him to further revelations that even if he must be separated from the general population, he will continue to spread his gospel of blood and ice. Now I seek to admire him in a new light, as the spiritual force that frees me from my past. Then it has the editor's note, Barry Morphew was charged with first-degree murder, tampering with a corpse, possession of a deadly weapon, and attempting to influence a public servant. He has pleaded not guilty. Now, those of you who haven't read the arrest affidavit, I have been diving into it, and I even started creating a video, you can watch that there, where you can see about Barry having an odd lunch hour and the lies that were in it. Let's look at the arrest affidavit because I'm going to show you a few biblical references he does make, and it's very interesting. You can let me know your thoughts in the comments. In one of the pages, it says, Special Agent Harris asked Barry what he meant when he said this might be God's way of resolving things. Barry said, I tell you what, I've had a very hard time understanding why God did this. And he allowed it. You, if you know what you know, you know that he allows bad things to happen. 
But all that we've been through, I just, and all that we are, I can't, I couldn't understand it. And maybe we'll never understand till we get to heaven. But if I would have known this in the beginning, I wouldn't have had to have suffered nine months not knowing why God did what he did. I'm not saying he did it to punish Suzanne because of her fare, but it makes more sense than what I knew before you guys came today. Barry said he wanted the news of the affair to be kept between agents and him, adding, and if we can all keep this private between us forever, that's all I would ever want. It references Barry being a godly man and says, Barry stated that Suzanne told Sheila, who's her friend, about things that has pitted Sheila against me. He said he thought Sheila would counsel her that marriage is for life. Barry said he told Suzanne when they got married it was for life, specifically saying to her, I'm a godly man and you better make sure that you want me because it's for life. It talks about Shoshana, Barry's girlfriend. And Barry said, I didn't meet her until October 25th. The first time I ever even saw her face to face and talked to her was October 25th. Barry said by meeting Shoshana, God answered his prayer of please give me something. Then they talked about the tranquilizer in the affidavit and it said, Barry admitted to disposing of the tranquilizers. He confirmed his last encounter with Suzanne was hearing her light snore. He explained his locations in the woods around his house on May 9th as looking for a turkey and agreed the evidence in this case makes him look bad, but it's in God's hands. Agents told Barry that from his own words, when he says, I don't recall, that means he is lying because he has answered almost all the audit questions with, I don't recall. There's so many in there that agents actually lost count. Then in another instance, it's talking about Barry and Suzanne and how things were rough. And basically he's saying, no, they weren't, they were great she should have just told me that she wanted to move on and I would just, you know, sit down and talk to her. Barry says, all she had to do was be honest with me. I'm not going to like it. It's not going to feel good, but I'm a God fearing man. I love the Lord. I think she loves the Lord. And further, he's saying, yeah, well, I've told you everything truthfully, but both you guys, so it's in God's hands. I mean, he allowed this whole thing to happen. Special Agent Grusing talks about how the pieces like Barry chasing around a chipmunk with a gun or the left turn for the bull elk are pieces that we need. Barry said, I know that all that stuff looks bad, but it's just crazy that that stuff's even a part of this. I mean, it's crazy how that stuff ironically is part of this. It just makes no sense to me. Like, why would God allow pieces like that that have to be answered in this situation? I just, I don't get it. Special Agent Grusing asked Barry what his thought is on why. Barry said, I have no idea. I don't know his ways. He's way greater than us. I don't know. I've often thought, God, why? I thought that I'd be cleared in two months. And I've often asked God, why are you dragging me through this? You know, physically, this is not good for me, mentally, emotionally, spiritually. I'm not angry with God. I fear him, love him, respect him, know that he allows things to happen for reasons. I try to figure out why. I try to say in my head, if she's going through this, all this stuff that I found out since January, and maybe God wanted to protect the girls from heartache. I mean, I don't know, but. And on one of the last pages, it says, Barry finally blamed God for Suzanne's death after being informed of the affair as a form of judgment on her and has stated repeatedly that God allowed this to happen. Let me know your thoughts below about this and what your thoughts are about the cousin. I'm working on my next video on the affidavit and it's something that a lot of you may not have heard of and I don't think you're going to be too happy. It really shows Barry has another side that many haven't seen and it's a perverse or perverted side to him that at this point I'm thinking maybe people should hide their children or teenagers. Stay tuned for that. And don't forget to watch this video. Let's have a chit chat below. Please subscribe if you haven't done so already. Please like and don't forget to share. Thank you so much for watching. We'll see you soon.